Um, I think we may be uh, a minute or so early, but that probably doesn't hurt anything to get started here. But my name is Harry Wells. I'm the director of the Central Kansas Library System and the Great Bend Public Library. And I'm pleased to be here at MPLA. I'm glad you're attending my session. There are handouts. I put some on the back chairs and over here on the side. On this table, there are some samples of books that I reviewed over the years. And you're welcome to look through them. I would just assume you not take them with you. But uh, you're certainly welcome to uh, look through them. And if somebody wants to take them and pass, start passing them around as we're talking, we can do that. Or at the end, it may be time for you to go over and, and look at them. Well, I'm interested. How many of you actually, in your current position, read book reviews? Wow, I hope just about all of you. I think I saw almost every hand go up. So, what I want you to do, uh, when I count to three, I want everybody to say the journal that they read the most book reviews out of. One, two, three. <laughs> okay. I heard library too. Maybe someone was just loud. Um, but <laughs> that's interesting because that's the the journal that I started with, and I and I have done uh, one other journal, uh, and I'm not doing that one currently. Um, but uh, writing uh, book reviews uh, can be uh, a lot of fun. When I did this workshop oh, 10 or 12 years ago in Kansas at the Library Association. Um, I used to call it uh, book reviewing for fun and profit um, because uh, there um, are some people that uh, for library journal would read books and at the end when the book was actually published, uh, library journal would send you a fresh copy um, and then they would donate that to their library and you know what the um, retail manufacturer's retail suggested price is in the front of the book or the back of the book. Um, and they would take a tax deduction for the books that they donate to the library. So that's kind of where the profit part came in. Um, there is one journal, uh, Forward Magazine, that did pay like 25 bucks per review. So there again was a kind of a profit thing. I've probably done anywhere from 130 to uh, 150 reviews. I'm not doing too many anymore. Um, I think I maybe have done a couple this year. And part of the reason is my area that I chose to do was really hot uh, back in 93 when I started. Um, and I kid people that uh, the only thing that I've ever read for the last 20 years is Russian history um, and facets of Russian history. Um, and people kind of screw up their nose with that one, you know, like, that's not my favorite kind of word. Um, but, you know, now is your chance. You know, as you, as you read those reviews, you probably read hundreds and hundreds of reviews. And obviously being here today, you're saying, you know what, I'd like to do that. Or I think I can do that. So um, that's what we're going to do today. And I visited with um, Francine Fielkoff, Fielkoff at LJ before she retired just a month or so ago. And uh, she was pleased that I was doing this uh, again because Library Journal does need book reviewers. So uh, this is an opportunity for you to get started. Some of the satisfaction in doing this is uh, seeing your name published. Have any of you ever written an article for a journal before? I see several hands. So for the rest of you, to see your name in print is really quite satisfying. So that's probably one of the reasons to do it. And you know what? It's great to put on your resume. You know, that you're actually doing some writing and you're published. And another thing is, once you get started with the journal and you learn the editors, then you have a, uh, a connection if you do want to write an article 
you know the editor to call and say, I'm writing an article, can you expedite this for me? You know, and sometimes that actually works. Uh, at my peak of uh, reviewing Russian history, probably in the late 90s or early 2000s, I was doing, in one year, twice, I did 13 books. And when you realize that they give you about three weeks to read and write your review, uh, that doesn't leave much time for doing anything else, particularly the kind of crap that I had to read. So um, some of it was good, some of it was not. So how do you get started today book reviewing? If you have your hand out, um, and uh, they're around the room, <clears throat> let's take a look at it so you, you see what, what all is in here. Uh, the, after the title page, there's uh, the actual presentation that I'm doing. And then the next page is uh, a page that comes in the book that tells when your review is due and, uh, and gives you information about remembering what library journal wants to review. The next page right off their website are the guidelines for reviewing for library journal. And that's really important for you to read and understand before you get started, because if you don't do it in their style, they will not like it. And uh, that's a problem. Um, the application um, didn't, didn't come out very well, but you can see the application is uh, the next thing. And then there are a couple pages of questions that they want you to respond to so that they get a feel for what you do. And then there's an actual contract or that you sign for library journal. And right at the end, I, I found a really good article uh, to show you that uh, a lot of people think that books are not dead, books are not going away. And uh, they assured me at library journal that um, last year they published, or, or they, they were involved with more books than they ever have in any other year. So books are still being published and they need to be reviewed. So, I need to. <laughs> At least it worked when we tested it. Is there a source button on there? I remember the first, one of the first internet workshops that I did at a school uh, in Humboldt, Kansas. And um, that's when I had to string a cord um, like 150 feet down the aisle and through the hallway and into the office to plug it in. Um, and I worked for an hour and a half trying to get the internet to work in the bucket lane five. Um, and so the whole time I was trying to get it to work, I was saying, this is what you would have seen. <laughs> you know? So I guess we can do that. We can say, this, this is what you would have seen. Um, this is the highlight of my program. You've got to see my slide. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's, we keep talking. We can get started here. We don't, we don't need that. Even though I won't use the microphone, does anybody need to use the microphone? Actually, yeah, for, for the last year. Okay. 
So you can see by your handout um, that uh, the first thing you need to do is kind of assess your strengths. You know, what do you have to give to Library Journal that is um, um, that, that they're going to want? And uh, that's pretty important. If you have an advanced degree in a field to show that you're, yeah, that you're, uh, you know, sort of an expert in that field, um, that's a good thing. Um, so uh, this is my getting started slide here, and that's what we're doing now. You know, if your advanced degree is in art history, that works. There are, there are uh, all different kinds of genres that uh, have materials that need to be reviewed. You need to select a publication if, if, you're, if you like library journal uh, or if you're doing book lists or doing any of the other journals. Um, you want to you decide which one you want to start with and I don't suggest that you, you know, apply it all of them. You know, take one and give it your best shot. Um, you need to read book reviews that they've been publishing so that you get a feel for the style and the way it's written. Because your reviewing has to fit in to the way they want it. So if, if, you're, if you've read the reviews, and you are comfortable with that style, then, then you say, well, I can do that. And remember, the key is to take the contents of a 200 to 800 page book and condense it down into 200 words, including the bibliography. So, you know, you, you have to start thinking, you know, can I capture the contents of a book and get it succinctly on the page the way that particular journal wants you to do it? You've got the guidelines. So if you read through the guidelines, some of the things that, that I look at when, when I'm writing a review that are, that are guidelines, um, number one is getting the bibliography in the um, in the style that they want it, with, with the author, the, the title, and then all of the other things that are in it, the page numbers, if it's got pictures in it, if it's got plates in it, if it's got an index, you, want, you need to get that in the right order. And then your review, as it's written for Library Journal, is number one, um, you, you want to connect the author with previous publications and with similar publications. But you can't do that in a paragraph. You have to do it in a sentence. And then you have to get into the contents of the book. So you get into the contents, and, and, I'll, get to, and I'll get into this a little bit more in the next section. But it's the guidelines of how they want it written, and I've given you the guidelines so you can read that, uh, that are really important to follow, and you'll see that a little bit later. Um, and, and then you need to, you know, besides filling out the application, um, and it was different when, when I did it 25 years ago, um, but if you can write a sample review, of a book that you don't think that anybody's reviewed, so you find some obscure book that you do a review on, um, and you send it in with the application because you, you can go on the website and, and get all of that information, and you fill out the application with your review, you send it in, and you wait and see if it's something that they want and need. And, and you can see um, in some of the information I've given you that they need almost uh, every genre uh, a reviewer for. So um, all you have to do is be brave enough to, to get it started, to get the ball rolling. So how do we do it? And that's um, 
what I started with before. Well, the first thing you need to do is you got three weeks. You got a 600 page book and it's boring as heck. You still have to read it. And when you read it, you have to read it sort of critically because you're going to compare it to other works. You're going to um, decide if the author is getting his point across. Um, that's why you pay really, really close attention to the foreword or the introduction. Because it's in those sections that the author says, this is what I intend to do. And then your whole reading of the book is to prove or disprove whether the author has done that. So as you're reading it, and if you look at my samples over here, most of them I, I write in the margins, I make notes, I put question marks. And, and so when I'm ready to write my review, and oftentimes I will transfer the pertinent information to one of the blank pages so that when I'm writing my review, I go to that page and I know where, where the notes are that I want to look back on. You can quote from, uh, from a galley, but you, you have to cite it exactly where it is in the galley so that they can check it in the final copy and make sure it's on the same pages. Um, every time you get a book, it comes basically from Library Journal, but it comes from the publisher to Library Journal to you. And in that book, usually is a page that has a lot of the bibliographic information on it, because sometimes it's not complete in the galley. Sometimes they don't know the number of pages, they don't know, or they haven't put the index in the galley. So you, <coughs> you need to um, um, <coughs> look at that kind of information on, on what's provided. Sometimes it's on the back of the book on the cover, sometimes it's on the last page. But you need to discover where the correct bibliographic information is. But you don't want to read what someone else has already written about that book. Why would you not do that? That's a rhetorical question, by the way. It's because um, that would color your thinking. It would color your writing. You know, and it's really tempting when you're struggling to capture the essence of a book. I'm going to peek at what someone else wrote and see if that helps me out a little bit. And I won't say that I've never done that, but, you know, it's, it's not right to take someone else's thoughts, we know that, um, and uh, claim them as our own. So we don't, we don't read what someone else has written on most of the galleys, uh, or if you get a book in, in its final version, which is happening more and more, you'll have the cover flap that has everybody's praise of the book and, and, and why you know, you should buy this book, um, and, and you want to stay away from that. Um, so you make notes of your impressions, the readability, the accuracy, and whether the author has delivered what they promised in the introduction or the foreword. Certainly you need to follow the guidelines of the publication, which we've mentioned several times, and you need to be succinct but you've got to provide enough information for you as librarians to decide whether you want that book. How many of you will only buy a book if, you, if you're satisfied with the review? Oh, nobody. I got a couple here. Okay. How many of you read the review and, and that colors your decision somewhat on whether you're going to buy it or not? Okay, that's maybe more accurate. So that's because who's ever writing those reviews have, have made it clear um, what the book is about and at the end, at least on Library Journal, um, you're, you're supposed to do what's now called the verdict. Remember that? And the verdict is, you know, who is it suited for? Should, should someone really buy this? Uh, and uh, so that's, that's 
pretty important for you to provide that information to people like you who, who rely on them. <coughs> okay, um, please do not, um, because on all of this information, there's um, the publisher's name and address, and you've got the editor's name on there, you've got their phone number, and, and maybe twice in 20 years I called the editor, and it was to ask a specific question that I didn't understand, probably in the bibliography. The LJ Library Journal does not like you calling the publisher. So don't call the publisher. Um, if you really, really hate a book and it's really driving you crazy, never write a negative review. Library Journal probably won't publish it. I don't know about some of the other ones. If you don't like it, send it back. If you can't get through it, send it back. I remember one time I wrote two reviews, one for actually publishing and one that I wished I, they would publish. And it's one of those that I, it was one of these academic books, you know, somebody, some lowly professor having to publish a book so they get tenure. And I said, you, and, and you've heard this before, you know, um, professors have to publish or perish, or not publishers, teachers professors, and I said, this one should have perished, <laughs> and uh, they didn't do that one, they did my other one. So anyway, don't, don't do uh, negative reviews, and I've already said this before, don't copy from um, what someone else has written, okay? It's, it needs to be your thoughts, it needs to be your impressions. You're the librarian writing for other librarians. You're, you're not the friend, you're, you're not the publisher's aid trying to get this book sold. You're writing it for people like you. Another thing is don't worry about grammar and spelling. You know, you may come across something that is not spelled right, and if that is, and if that is truly something you found, as you submit your review, which is usually in the body of an email to the editor, you can make a little note down at the bottom. By the way, on page 61 of the galley, this word is misspelled. But that's not part of your review. Um, if the book is not written well, if it's not written so that it made you feel like you want to continue, you can reflect that, but you don't want to get into the specifics of what's left out. That's in a separate note to the editor. And of course, don't cross any of those barriers. Okay, about editors. Um, I've had probably four editors in the last 20 years, and they all react differently to your writing. The first one in particular, when I would send in a review, and, and back then, and they sent you the copy, they would have a laminated uh, copy of your review stuck inside. And I would, first couple times, I'd pull out that review and read it, and I said, this isn't what I wrote, you know? Because the editor had taken my words and made it, you know, kind of, funky and flowery and things like that wasn't me, but, you know, I never complained. I just said, oh well, you know, it looks good. And uh, so you, you just need to be aware that editors will, will do things. Um, the, the last editor that I had, um, had um, we got into several pitch arguments about something that I said in my review and they didn't understand what I was trying to get across, and I suppose that's important. Um, but I liked the way I said it. So when I wrote my explanation, it supported the way I said it, and, and then she would email back something else. 
and we had some some emails flying back and forth and, and it was not real comfortable sometimes. So just be aware that uh, an editor may may change what you've written. Now they prefer that that you write it and the editor doesn't do much changing. That's the way it's been for the last three or four years. They don't go in and rewrite it for you. They just want to want you to do it right. Um, editors really are human. They will visit with you. Um, they they do criticize. Um, so you know that's just par for the course. Um, do we have any questions? I mean, when you, when you get to the end of the presentation, if you keep talking, you're in trouble. So um, I have some sample books that that we can go over and look at. You can you can see how I've written in the uh, in the margins of them. You can uh, you can see the kind of things that you get, uh, the kind of things that you have to do. And I said I would show you one of the worst books that I had to review. This is one. This is one of the early galleys uh, that I got, um, and you can see it's it's not in a in a you know real nice format. Um, but I, from my historical perspective, the author did not um, talk about Stalin's outcasts like like I remember them from history, and so that's what I said in the review, it, it wasn't a negative review, but what it said was, you know, I don't agree with this. And I did go around and around with the editor a little bit about that. So that's one of the worst things that I that I had to review. Um, I've had like 800 page books that I think a professor was going to use for a textbook. Um, and those are really nasty to get through. And let me show you some of the really good ones. This is one called Matasha's Dance. It's a cultural history. Around, which was uh, really, really quite pleasant to read, even though it was a very large book. The Red Millionaire, um, a political biography of Willie Munsenberg, um, was a, a, a good book to read from the um, early 20s. And one called Seductive Journey. Um, and um, this particular one is not Russian history. It's American tourists in France from Jefferson to the Jazz Age. Uh, and th these were three of, of the ones that you know you really like to read. So, do we have any questions about writing book reviews? Yes. Repeat the question, please. Um, the question is, um, when I, when I, if I would send a book back, which I think I only did once in uh, in 25 years, do you see it show up again? Did someone else read it because they liked it and they wrote the review? And and, and you know, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, that that's a good one. I should probably ask. You know, I would I would think if if the expert in the field didn't like it and sent it back, that they probably wouldn't send it to someone else. But I can't tell you for sure. Hmm. 
You know, again, that's a that's another good question. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know how I don't know what criteria um, the editors at Library Journal have for what they review. Um, and I'm sure they they don't do everything. You know, they don't do uh, how well they do some how to, but they don't do any any like me mechanical explanations or meta. Well, they do a little bit of medical too. Um, but you know. There's, there are quite a few things that they don't do. Uh, and again, when you uh, look through the material that you have, I, I think it kind of lists the genres, or I thought I maybe wrote it somewhere. But it's pretty wide. But I, I don't know, and I don't think LJ is at this conference to ask anybody. Yes? So what you're saying is that you do not have, you can't find a good review of a book or even a review of a book that is more often not any good. <laughs> well, I know there's probably a lot of vanity self-publishing that uh, doesn't get anybody to review it. Um, so that probably is not the case. Um, and, and, it, and again, I, I'm not sure. Um, I really couldn't tell you, but you know, I know there are some things that don't get reviewed uh, simply because um, um, there, there's, you know, they don't submit it to anyone. So, you know, and, and again, that's kind of what, what the publisher is for, to uh, get it out to uh, different journals for reviewing. So if you've got a good publisher, then you have a good chance of getting a book reviewed. Yes. I once reviewed a book in galley form that was so littered with typos and error, other layout errors that it was a chore to get through, and it was a specialty uh, in my specialty area, so I just slogged through it. But if it's in the galley and it's in terrible construction, does that give them time to tell the publisher they need to go back and clean it up? Um, well, hopefully, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what the what the, the time frame is, but hopefully they've got somebody working on that as you're reviewing it. Um, and the question was, uh, one person in the audience uh, got a galley that was full of uh, mistakes and and spelling errors and layout errors that it was a real chore to get through and uh, wondered if there was enough time for the uh, publisher to go back and correct it before they published it. Hopefully that's the case because um, that would kind of become a laughing stock, I would think, you know, if it were published that way. Some question over here. I have read some negative reviews, so there must be varying degrees of how negative <laughs> Possibly. So some of them have been not very good about the book at all. So, but you're just saying library you know, like Right. That's correct. And that question was uh, an audience, person in the audience, uh, has read negative reviews. I don't know if you meant library journals, but maybe in, in other journals. In other journals. Um, and so, Evidently, there are some degrees of negative reviews that, that do get through, and, and I, I'm sure that happens, but I, I was told I should not submit the negative review. So. There. Yeah. Have you ever had an author take issue with your review or, or something you've said in a review? Um, have I ever had an author take issue of something I said in a review? You know what? They they never get that far. Um, <laughs> it, 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 I'm sure to their over over the um, sitting at dinner time with friends, they, they probably curse me quite a bit. I don't know. Um, but uh, what I have seen, um, and particularly when when I was able to write my review more of my voice without the editor screwing it up. Um, my reviews were in um, 
Amazon in Borders, when you when you went and and looked for a book, uh, and you went down to the reviews, my review was usually there. So I thought I must be doing what I should be doing. Yes. On, on your on on the negativity, can you put something in there that kind of says the book isn't as good as you would like it to be, or does it have to be totally glorifying? I mean, that means that when we're reading it, that maybe it's not quite. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, you could you could certainly point out um, something that that you don't think makes it a, a great book. Um, for example, you might say that the author never did prove his point kind of thing. Um, but then when you get down to the verdict, instead of saying something like, um, you know, this high schooler should never read this book or whatever, what you're doing is you're saying, who can read it? Who would be the audience for this book? So um, that's where you certainly would not be negative. It's in the verdict. Any more? Yes. You mentioned at the beginning that you some years you've done as many as thirteen books. Do you have the option, like if you if they ask you to do a book and you don't have time to do it in their time frame, to turn it down? Um, yeah, but well, what happens is you're sitting in your office and suddenly FedEx brings you a book and and it says that if your book is due and they put the date on the slip of paper. Um, so what you would have to do is stick it back in the mail with a little note that says, uh, I don't have time to do it now. But, and, and this does bring up a good point, if you turn down too many books, they're not going to send you books. And the other thing is, if you don't get them in on time, they're not going to send you books because when they send you a book, they want it usually for the next issue. So if you don't get it in on time, and, and that, that can be a problem because sometimes you take a book and it's a big, thick book and you don't know you're going to get busy, but you have to finish it. And, and that's when you're tempted to skip chapters, you know, read the first two chapters and then go and read the, the ending and, 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 you know, scrape together a review. And I'm not going to say that I've never done that, but I didn't do it very often. But um, you want to get the review in on time. When they give you three weeks, um, that's, that's the date they want it in. And you're submitting it by email, so you can wait till the afternoon of the 21st day and send it in and still be okay. I have um, emailed to them and said it's going to be a few days late because, and and that seems to have worked. So, yes. Never, you know, yes. 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 In the application, there is information about uh, uh, the kinds of things you would like to do. If there are no more questions, uh, if you want to, and we are probably a little bit early, I'm not sure how much early, um, you're welcome to uh, look at some of the things that I reviewed and how I've done it. And so you got a few extra minutes to copy.